This podcast contains potentially adult language, adult themes, definitely drinking, and possibly sexual context. Listener discretion is advised. to Drinking With Authors, the podcast. This is the Literary Breeds edition. We're eventually going to get an underwear sponsor. Um, Don't forget to like and subscribe to us. (laughs) It's my goal, by the way, to have an underwear sponsor for this. (laughs) Don't mind modeling them. It'll be fun. Okay. (laughs) Don't forget, like, subscribe, review. If you have an author that you would like us to um, hunt down and pull on the show or you are an author that would like to be on the show please email us at drinkingwithauthors at gmail.com we'd love to have you and with that let me introduce my amazing co-host today who is in full regalia did i say that correctly i think I did. yes you did i did That's impressive and so if you're listening to this you gotta watch the youtube which is danielle orsino thank you for being here and our guest me. today is Nancy Hauser Bloom. Let's talk a little bit about what we're drinking. So I found this um, tropical angry orchard hard fruit cider, which is uh, my ring light is sh- setting off. It's mango, apple, and pineapple. And I have to say it's actually really good. It does need whiskey in it. So I'm going to do that next time. But it's pretty amazing. I also discovered that they have a dark cherry apple one that's coming out that is 8% by volume. I will be discovering this. I will give updates on how that goes. On air, preferably. Yeah, properly (laughs) on air. Drink two or three of them, maybe chug them. I can't chug Angry Orchard Cider, so that's not a thing. Okay, Danielle, what are you drinking? I have got my barefoot apple fruscato. Because, you know, I'm I'm hardcore like that in my <laughs> uh, unicorn goblet. Oh, my so gosh. It just goes I love with it. the look. It goes. It matches. It's amazing. I and stay in character. Yes. Stay, stay in full character, which just means you're going to cast a spell and we're all going to die. Okay. Nancy, what are you drinking? Because it's fancy. I, Don't undersell it this time. Okay. I am drinking ginger turmeric kombucha. Kombucha, I never say it right, with Jameson whiskey. I love that because it's really Elevated. like antioxidants and whiskey together, know, which makes it's pretty healthy. It's and I just very healthy. healthy. I like yeah, it. Exactly. And I was sick. And I Ooh. actually was at a bar before COVID when you went places when you were sick. Um, I was at a bar and a woman suggested I drink hot tea with it, actually, hot tea, kombucha, and whiskey. And that was how oh. I got turned on to it. And it was um, actually, yeah, a turmeric one then too. So I I'm, I'm going to have to try that because one of the things I love is a hot toddy, which mm-hmm. is whiskey, um, lemon, honey, and you can put ginger in it too and hot water which is what a lot of times in the past histories of the world, people would drink for when they were sick. Mm -hmm. I drink it because it's warm and it tastes good, having nothing to do with illness. Although I've used it a couple of times with a sore throat, mainly because I found an excuse to put whiskey in something that I'm drinking (laughs) when I have a sore throat. So I'm I'm just going to say that I'm sure there's a hidden... You know yeah. what? I'm not hidden about any of this. I was no, say, no. I'm like, do I have an excuse to drink mm-hmm. for a reason? Why do you think I created a whole podcast? Right? Drinking what I was going to say. Here we go. Here we are. I have a podcast. Yeah. Drinking all the time. Just kidding. Okay. So Nancy, rapid fire questions. Are mm-hmm. you ready? Okay. I'm the ready. First, the first question is, what is your favorite book of all time? book favorite book of all time it depends on how far it does it matter how far i go back i don't we don't care it's your podcast you go wherever you want to go well i probably want to instrumental you know i like books that change my schema of thinking and there was a book out in the 90s called ishmael and it was about a talking gorilla that was talking about you know the our culture and um that was extremely um, kind of influential in my in my life at the time. I really liked that, but I loved a, bo- a book called Boys in the Boat. 
I don't know if you've ever heard of that. No, um, and it is a story. It's historical fiction. I tend towards some historical fiction, you know, or fantasy kind of, you know, but if I'm um, historical fiction about a rowing team during the 19, was it 1936 Olympics that went to Berlin, um, I believe. And so they're a rowing team and you'd think it would be so boring because it's a rowing team, but you know, the, the, um, process of how you become a strong rowing team and then going to um, Berlin, you know, and they, I, I won't give it away because it's a fantastic book, but it gets into um, all the orchestration of what was done in Berlin to make it look like it was a lovely place to be, you know, and that they weren't, you know, doing things to Jews, you know, that they shouldn't be. And, and so it, it just has a very broad spectrum of a really good story. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, what about your least favorite book? <laughs> I had thought about this. I think one of my least favorite books, although I know they were popular, you guys probably loved them, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. Did you love it? it. I did not no, love it myself. Didn't read it. Oh, I just, you know, I did not. Uh, the rape scene in it, you know, was probably, it haunted me. You know, I, I can't read. There's lots of books I just can't read because I don't need to be reminded of, you know, horrible mm -hmm. things in the world and horrible people. And um, that rape scene in that just, you know, was it haunted me for a long time. And then the, you know, the whole anal plug thing and, oh, it was horrible. It was just so graphic and cruel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was fair that, enough. Obviously. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I get it because, and that's, it's interesting you bring that up because more and more um, people are putting trigger warnings at the, mm -hmm. in their books and their book blurbs and stuff like that uh -huh. to let people know. And I think if you're listening, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, that's, you know, kind of pandering. And I'm like, no, because there are definitely things that trigger people. Like if you mm -hmm. have suicide in your book or whatever, mm -hmm. I mean, it's good because, you know, and it all goes back to, I always reference this is if a dog dies in the book, there's an entire website dedicated. You can look if a dog dies in a book, a TV show or something like that, you can look it up before you watch it if that's triggering for you, right? Mm -hmm. So I, you know. Oh, gee, hmm. I probably <laughs> should have, gee, that's, uh, all right, Erica, we may have to go back on a couple books there for me, you know what I'm saying? And <laughs> figure some things out here or there, I don't know. That's, uh, I did not know that. Wow, whole website's dedicated to that. I'll have to think about that. That's, <laughs> that's a new, um, that's a new thought. I well, have a also, question for you, Nancy. Mm, go ahead. Spirit animal. Spirit animal. I think I'd have this, you know, because I really believe in that sort of thing. Probably spirit animal might be. I just love, oh, wait, wait. Um, I love giraffes. I don't know if they can be spirit animals or not. Sure. Um, you know, but it, I've always had a real attachment to um, to giraffes. I just think they're sleek and strong and powerful and and beautiful. What what fantasy animal then? So, if giraffes are your spirit animal here, what about a fantasy animal or a fantasy creature? Would you feel most connected with then? Hmm. Probably a creature that is part cat. Ooh. Because I do love the independence of cats, the part cat and probably part human. I've always liked the idea of the, the morphed, the morphed creature, you know, that takes on humanness as well as the personality of a creature and I would say probably cat do you think you'd ever get into writing fantasy and maybe going down that road to bring in that type of um, creature 
into a book? I think that would be really intriguing, actually, because I love nature. So it would be, I, I would expect myself to go the route of probably birds or woodland creatures myself. That might be, and that live in trees for sure. You know, like any- um, Like a dryad or something? Mm-hmm, yeah. That could be very cool. Pretty cool pretty powerful. Sorry, I blipped for a moment. We have total power failure here in the mountains. Go team. That mm. happens. That happens. My internet sometimes is like whatever. That's why I have an amazing co-host that just keeps going when I'm like, <laughs> you know what, I'm going to go. I'll be back just in a minute. Um, uh, I don't know what questions we asked. Did we ask what our favorite book to TV series is yet? No, that's all you. Or movie. What is your favorite book that's been put into a movie or TV series that you think they did really well? I really liked the book Wild. It was about a woman um, that wrote that walked, hiked, backpacked the Pacific Crest Trail. She was kind of going down the path of drug addiction and really wanted to get out of that. And they made it into a movie with Reese Witherspoon. And they did a really nice job of it. They couldn't delve as much just time-wise into her whole backstory, but you get the, you know, the snippet of it. And if you'd read the book, then you would know it. But they did a really nice job with that. Very cool. What what else? Which one do you think they did not do a nice job with? <laughs> um timeline and I love time travel movies and timeline I think was written by I think it was a Michael Crichton book um and it's a fascinating time travel story and they made it into a movie it had uh, Gerard Butler and it was okay it wasn't it didn't suck completely but they didn't do it justice that the that the book was it was disappointing and then there was a yeah, there was a book too called um, Battlefield Earth. It was um, a yes. thick book and it was fascinating, um, you know, about alien invasion and taking over Earth. And then they made it into a movie with John Travolta because it's a, what, Christian scientist author wrote it, you know, the head of it. Um, and it was, it was terrible. They did a terrible job of it. You know, it's interesting yeah. because I think I love that they are doing more TV shows, even our limited edition series, mm -hmm. because I think that you can tell the story sometimes of books a lot better in that. Yes. Because you'll never fit everything that's in a book into a two hour movie. Like right. it's Agreed. impossible to do. That. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I like it that there's more expanse on it. Um and I like that they sometimes choose the best stuff about books. Like I think Stephen King's It, they chose sort of the better stuff. Like I, I yes. love the original miniseries they did because I love Tim Curry and the cast was actually amazing. Although the monster at the end was very cheesy, but I actually love what they did with the newer ones, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think they did a really good job of more of the horror aspect versus the suspense aspect of it because it has both Stephen King's very good at like making your skin crawl and then showing you something completely gross you know so I, I mm -hmm. like that aspect but I think it's better when it's told over multi things mm -hmm. okay what is something that will push you immediately out of a story if you're reading it actually the first question is do you finish books regardless or will you stop reading I'll probably usually I'll flip to the back somewhere just to see how, you know how the story ends or I'll skim many many pages and see if it gets any better and um, if it doesn't I would stop reading it I don't have um, I'm not don't have an aversion to doing that but I would probably go to the end you know there was um, the book American Gods by Neil Gaiman was yes. you know so many people's favorite book you know so many people I know and I finally decided to read it and I was like you know I, I am not good at holding my attention to 500 600 
700 page yeah. book you know i'm i'm more give me your 300 400 max and and you know i'll i'll do it but you have to really be you know there has to be something to grab me to keep me going that long so that's no i understand okay when and when you read how do you like to read now so do you need paper do you like hardbacks do you like your e-reader do you like audiobooks like what is your what is your jam now I almost never do audiobooks even though I hear they're the way to go when you're publishing them you know for sure um but I don't do those very often because I lose I get distracted you know with with the story because I'm usually doing something else um I still like paper books um but I've really been reading more and more ebooks um because I tend to read um, when I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't sleep or, you know, when I'm going to bed and um, that way I can read with the light out. And um, I like that. So I've been doing a really a blend of both. No, well, that's very cool. I'm a huge audiobook fan. As Me too. Sure, but also I just, I put them on when a, I'm driving. Even if mm -hmm. I'm doing errands, I just have them go when I'm driving. Mm -hmm. It's either that or sometimes I listen to podcasts. I don't know, like drinking with others. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing is like if I'm doing chores, like if I'm just doing laundry and I'm just cleaning or just like doing like normal yep. chores that don't require like me to think through them. I mean, mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but you do the dishes. Hopefully you're not doing a ridiculous right. amount of heavy concentration. Mm -hmm. If you are, there may be something wrong with your dishes. You know, you can listen to. And I think we have a lot of time during our day that we have to do be doing something, walk the right. dog, whatever, that you have the bandwidth to listen to a book, but we just don't always think about it. So that's what that's what I use the time for. And I've been listening to more and more podcasts that way and in the car too. Mm -hmm. I think a story for me requires um, the podcast, you know, you can kind of come and go and you're not going to miss anything crucial. Um, where in the story of my, you know, my concentration fades, I'm like, oh, you know, what happened? How did that come about? You know, I missed that. So how are we on a different planet? Where did that? I feel like <laughs> that happens with TV shows sometimes too. If you somehow skip yes. an episode or it's late yeah, during an episode and mm -hmm. then you're like, who the hell is that character? Like, <laughs> But so my original question back to the finisher book is, is there a particular thing that drives you crazy that'll push you out of the story? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, probably too much violence. You know, really doesn't I, you know, I can certainly do some, but probably that would be, you know, the main thing that would really, um, I just say I don't, I don't need that. You know, this isn't my kind of story or scares the pants off of me. You know, I just have, um, you know, like one of my author friends, she does write paranormal and she writes really well. And I, you know, read her first book and I recommend it to other people, but I'm like, you know, I'm sorry. And then I have a friend who writes, um, she'd be, they'd both be good on your podcast. Um, one that Refer writes, them away. Um, okay, them. writes thrillers, SP, um, kind of like espionage thrillers sort of things. And, um, you know, I started her second book and I told her, you know, it's so good, but I'm so paranoid, you know, about, you know, being tracked and all that kind of thing anyway. And I'm, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm whamby pamby because I'm not, but there's just certain things that when I tend to read at night, they just filter into my, you know, my sleep world and I don't need that. So Mm -hmm. well, that makes sense. What about for you as an author? As your editor said, because I know you're in book two, but book one, did your editor say, for instance, hey, you, your characters need to stop shrugging? Like, <laughs> what is your little Achilles heel that you do that your editor was like, hey, cool story. Let's not do this again. You know, um, my experience, at, you know, with my editor was that they, um, I really didn't get in-depth feedback. My, oh. I had a proofreader who probably did more line editing, it turned out. Um, and <laughs> I, I had, you know, my, the sex scene that's in my book is um, pretty watered down. And I talked to her on the phone um, after she'd read the book the first time. 
And no, I got an email from her and she said, wow, I just read that. And she said, that was a surprise. <laughs> and she said, it was pretty explicit. And she didn't think that it went with the rest of the book, you know, and that it should be rewritten just because the rest of the book was so, and I had a friend who told me the same thing, a beta reader said it was so PG, you know, the book that, you know, to have that in there was, but just the way she worded that. And then I get feedback from quite a bit of um, need to show, not tell, you know, more. It's probably from my critique group that I get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The one thing. We all, we all have those. Things. We all get that. Yeah. Okay. Danielle, what questions do you have, my friend? I'm going to go with uh, one off the beaten path. And if you had to run into one of these creatures and prove that it exists, either a UFO, Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster, which one would it be and why? Oh, that's interesting. I've always believed in UFOs. So probably that would be the one. It's interesting because we have a very pretty famous Bigfoot museum in the community next to mine. And he's been in documentaries and um, the museum is quite fascinating. And he writes articles, you know, about taking people out in the woods and um, they never quite see one, but they see prints and, you know, that type of thing. Um, I would say that aliens for sure. I would, and I believe that they're more E.T. and what was the Ron Howard movie from, I don't know, years ago, you know, where I, I believe they're, they, they're not all, they're more benevolent and less interested in us than, you know, like the movies where they, you know, grow and burst out of your stomach sort of movies, you know. I, that I enjoy is my it. favorite movie. <laughs> it's my favorite movie. Um, those are not really so much, those are more like animals, honestly. Aliens are more like animals than actually like flying a ship, UFO. Like that's not what they do. Like any of those movies, they're not like, you know what, we're flying a ship. They're more <clears> like, hey, these things were are cool and they will they're more like insects, very large acid for yeah. blood insects. So I never even thought, thought about that. Right. I thought District 9 was, uh, was that what it was called, I think? Yeah, it was, District District 9. 9 was an interesting movie because it had such a cultural parallel besides. But, you know, yeah. they were sex, but they were not evil mm -hmm. creatures, you know, so. No, no, I, I don't, I don't. I, I mean, I, I assume we're not the only ones in the entire universes that are mm -hmm. out there. So I'm sure there are very nice benevolent ET-like ones, and there are probably crappy ones, just like there are on planet Human Earth. Beings. There are <laughs> nice humans, and then there are not great humans. Right. Okay, in the spirit of one of my other co-hosts, what is your favorite weird food combination? <laughs> um, weird food combination. I mean, I like popcorn for dinner, but that's not so weird. Lots of people do that. I, um, I don't know. Lots of people do that for dinner. No, FDA uh, does not recommend. No, just kidding. <laughs> my husband knows that when he leaves town, that's going to be one of my because he's more of the cook than I am. That's going to be one of my you know main food groups would be would be popcorn. Um, I don't know that I have a weird food combination it's really weird when I was young I used to dip my popcorn in water and then take a bite yeah dip it in water you just... <laughs> why was weird. that I don't know <laughs> no idea so I love putting um hot tamales is that what they are the little candy the you know the red candy yeah in my popcorn or or the the cinnamon ones or so okay sauce. i guess you get the cinnamon popcorn it's the taste. salty okay. cinnamony i also like putting like m&ms in my popcorn too yes mm -hmm. well that would make sense yeah that's yes yes okay, I, okay i'll I give you that not to take peanut m&ms to theaters because there are people with peanut allergies and you can pretty much ruin their entire existence by you know that never um, thought of that yeah yeah Believe it or not, that can be a bad thing. Okay, Danielle, I'm going to give you the final question of the literary briefs edition. 
Why, thank you. Okay, I'm going to go back to my fantasy world. If there's one place you could visit in the literary fantasy realm, where would it be and why? Well, I did love in the, what, Lion in the Wardrobe books, going through a portal and coming out into just a, a new world that you could leave, you can come and go in it. And I think it would be, you know, one of a beautiful, it would, you know, it would be a beautiful world because I like to build beautiful worlds. So, you know, it would definitely have forests and waterfalls and sea creatures that can come up and chat with you. And, um, so are you going into Narnia? <laughs> that's the question. Are you going to Narnia? Or are you picking another pre-established? Because you can build. I'm probably your... going to. Did they have fish that talk to Narnia? I don't know. I don't know if they have fish that talk. I can't remember. Danielle, can you remember if they had talking fish? I don't think. Sounds like she's describing the veil, my world personally, but I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> okay, you might want to go to the veil. It's not, it's a little dangerous at times, though. Just yeah, I was gonna say, but if we were a little violent there, but we do have sea creatures that talk. <laughs> Ah, okay. That's that's true. Okay, Nancy, again, shameless self-promotion time. How do hold up your book? You have a copy of your book. Let's hold it up for the YouTube. I do. I'm gonna get this one actually. Okay. I had the cover just enhanced. So whispers for Tara. Um, you can buy it off of Amazon, Barnes and Noble. You can go to your local bookstore and they can order it for you. Um you can, yeah visit my website, which has a link to Amazon, which is nancyhauserbloom.com. Very cool. That is a beautiful cover, by the way. Absolutely beautiful. You know, and my sister-in-law actually did it, but she was a graphic designer, so she knew what she was doing. Um, and then it came from two photographs that she put together that were taken by a friend of mine. One of them is down in Tennessee, more the um, Shenandoah Valley, I believe. And one was in Michigan that she blended together. So thank you. I beautiful. thought it was really beautiful too. It is absolutely beautiful and perfect for your book. So mm -hmm. I like it very much. Yeah. Nancy, thank you so much for being on this podcast with us. You did well and survived the rapid fire questions. <laughs> you did fantastically. You know, I'll be thinking more about my fantasy worlds now because yeah, <laughs> we're gonna get an email going. Okay, I realized where I want to live. <laughs> yes, exactly. This is where I want a vacation. I'll give you an answer next summer. week. No, that's fine. It's so funny. I get sometimes emails from people who were like, "Was I okay?" I'm like, "You were perfectly fine. You were perfectly fine." So it was wonderful having you. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Thank you. And I will send you some names of authors you'd really enjoy. Please. I love the names. We love talking to people. And Danielle, thank you again for your amazing co-hosting and awesome cosplay. Mm -hmm. So check that out on our YouTube. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave us a review if you'd like. We'd love to hear from you. Um, you can always reach us at drinkingwithauthors at gmail.com. And um, the guest, again, has been the amazing nice Nancy Hauser Bloom. And we Yay. will see you guys next time. Oh, sponsor, drink, uh, Skunk Brother Spirits, coupon code DWA10. Have a couple ciders, and then I forget what the hell I'm supposed to say. Okay, <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. All right. Thank you.